So M. Night Shyamalan has said that when he pitched his new film Trap to the studios, he said that he described it as Silence of the Lambs at a Taylor Swift concert. Take all of my money. That's all I have. Take it. I'm in. What is going on everyone? And welcome to my review of M. Night Shyamalan's newest film, Trap. And every single time this guy comes out with a new film, I'm there opening day. I love this guy's filmography. As much as he's got as many misses as hits, I'm always curious to see what he does because he's such a distinct voice. He's great. He seems very down to earth. Even if his films sometimes feel a little self-indulgent, he seems like he's got a real good passion for the craft. And that's shown because Glass, Old, Knock at the Cabin and Trap have come out within a five year span of each other. That is insane. And while I wasn't a fan of his previous film, Knock at the Cabin, as I said, I'm always here day one because he's always going to deliver something for me, whether it's going to work or not. He's always giving us something interesting and something unique. And Trap follows Josh Hartnett's character of Cooper, who is attending a concert with his 13-year-old daughter, Riley. The concert is Lady Raven, who is, in the fictional world, a massive pop star. She may as well just be Taylor Swift, because that's kind of what it's riffing off of. And... When he's there, he notices that there are a bunch of police there, a bunch of FBI agents, a bunch of security, and no way out. And he's realised that this entire concert is a trap to try and capture this mysterious serial killer known as the Butcher. Now, I wouldn't consider this to be a spoiler because you find out within the first five minutes and it was blatantly revealed in the trailers, but Josh Hartnett is the serial killer that is the trappy, the one that they're all trying to catch. So you're watching this film from the perspective of a serial killer who's doing everything that he can to get out. It's a really, really good setup for a bottle thriller. Josh Hartnett is great. I've always been a big fan of him. Like you go back to things from like The Faculty and Halloween H2O and even other horror films like 30 Days at Night. Um, it, he's a really, really solid actor. And I'm glad to see him get the leading man role. And he does great here. He's got a certain kind of sleazy but kind of seductive charm to him where he can just kind of weasel his way in and out of certain situations with ease. Sorry guys. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. A lot of the times when he does it, you have to suspend disbelief, but the film has that sense of humour about itself and its wit and its kind of tongue-in-cheek nature to the point that you just kind of go along with it. It's not trying to be some, you know, realistic thing. It's a short thriller that is intending to give you a bit of a adrenaline rush. And Josh Hartnett really, really steals a show here. And that's a tough gig because having to play a serial killer where he's a horrible, horrible person, but he also has to balance it with the fact that he has got a daughter and a wife and another son. He's kind of got these two sides to him, which he's trying to keep hidden from his family. So you're kind of rooting for him to be able to escape and continue ha living his happy life because you actually get really quite invested in him, the father-daughter dynamic. And that's another one of the film's strengths is the father-daughter dynamic between Josh Hartnett and Ariel Donoghue as Riley. There's a kind of disconnect there that is very present, but Josh Hartnett's Cooper is trying to make it up with his daughter, kind of just trying to get back into her life and feel like an actual presence there. There's some part in the start of the film when he's struggling to keep up with all the Gen Z terms and slang and stuff like that, even though they're not real terms at all. He's trying to keep up with it. He's trying to sound cool. He's trying to be a present father. And you get endeared to their characters. So you have compelling characters and a really, really solid co concept. And... For the first half of the film, it delivers on that. It's very, very tense, very, very well paced actually because it's a bit of a different kind of thing because it gives you breathing room because a lot of it is focusing on Lady Raven who is played by M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, Seleka or Selika, one of the two. And you really feel like you're actually at a concert. It feels like a big scale concert. There's extras or background actors everywhere just... The whole venue is just filled out with background actors and it's really, really good to see so many people. Like Shyamalan just really, really wanted to make sure that this film felt like an authentic concert experience. And it does. The long wait lines, the crowds of people, everyone pushing past. It actually feels like you're at a concert, which is good. It doesn't feel like it's, you know, just 
like that, that, that's just one thing that I was like, I'm glad he nailed that because going to a concert is miserable. And he gets the just overbearing crowds perfect. And his use of background actors was excellent. Trap knows exactly what it is too. It's not trying to be anything more than what it is. It's trying to just give you a good time at the movies, a good thrilling time at the movies. And as I said, for the first half of it, it really succeeds. I really, really enjoyed this opening half of the film, which is why I'm phrasing very carefully because unfortunately it lost a lot of steam and went off the rails in a pretty terrible way, unfortunately, which is what I'll discuss now. This film is a Shyamalan film through and through. Weird dialogue, really, really bizarre character exchanges and just things that's just like, what is going on here? And eventually the plot becomes very, very rinse and repeat. It's one of those false ending syndrome kind of deals, except the problem is, is the false ending happens for the last 30 minutes and each time it's basically just the same false ending, just in a slightly different situation. So it gets pretty tiresome. It's still entertaining. It's still silly. It's still fun. It still keeps its sense of humor about it. But unfortunately, it really struggled to keep me properly invested in the second act, which is a shame because I really did like how the film started. And M. Night Shyamalan is one of my favorite filmmakers, and it would have been nice to be able to say that this is a knock out of the park. It's not. It's better than Knock at the Cabin. It's better than Old. But it's still one of those films where, by the end of it, it's just like, yeah, this is a Shyamalan film. Overall, I enjoyed Trap for what it was. It was silly. It got pretty bad towards the end but a really, really solid central performance and this kind of father-daughter dynamic was really, really good. And a bit of kind of a metatextual element to it too with M. Night Shyamalan having his own daughter in the role. He kind of just did this film to promote her music career, which I really, I, I find that really nice. I like that a lot. So Trap, it's not great. In fact, it's not even very good. But if you're willing to suspend some disbelief, you can watch this film with some friends and you will have a good time. Thanks for watching my review of Trap. Let me know what you thought of this film in the comments and I'm going to be doing a bit of a Shyamalan video series soon. I'm going to be doing a film, a video ranking his films and a tier list of all of his twist endings. So look forward to that over the next week or so and I'll see you all later. Bye.